technology. Yeah, <laughs> commercial software. <clears throat> I didn't expect that. So I usually say the proprietary software versus open software. Open source software is also commercial, and it's, it's not the case. So nice to see you here. My name is Becca Zarbo. I'm coming from the company called Isco, and uh, let's see how I can lead you in the in the this area, how to build an enterprise GIS with cross-party software. Few words about my company who is sponsoring me here. We support about 20 people located in Finland and nowadays also in Sweden. And we are helping our interesting changes to uh, slides. Uh, we tested it. Well, that's the misunderstanding between Google and Microsoft, I think so. So we help the customers to use the open source software like Post4G and also with the open data. So I'm also a member of the OSM community and global community has some arrogances also in the film, I would say. Uh, about the enterprise GIS. First thing is that, as mentioned, I have been working in the years more as a distributor in Finland for a year's right, but now 10 years for the open source. So what is the enterprise? It's a big thing to solve by usually big key account managers or big customers with big amount of money. And uh, quote by funny than by the of big GIS company. Pick a call in chat. <laughs> so, enterprise system. I usually, of course, go to the Wikipedia to understand what is the enterprise. So, enterprise software is something that, that satisfies needs of organization of individual user. And enterprise system is collective. It's collection of the enterprise software. And uh, enterprise GIS, okay, we probably can't see anything. So this is a organization-wide collection of GIS software to manage the geospatial information. Uh, if you want to see the slides later on, just send me an email and I will give, give you a real copy of the slides where you can read. And uh, not one GIS desktop, that's not the enterprise GIS. And, and, and also uh, focusing on the processes and uh, think about that the project will start and end, but processes will go on uh, whenever, whatever happens in the company. So architecture of enterprise GIS, I like to put this in three different layers, data storage layer, application server layer, and then the UI, user interface layer. So how, <laughs> this is really unreadable, those uh, texts, but sorry about that. Uh, how to build uh, enterprise GIS? Even I can't say it without my glasses, sorry. <laughs> so uh, you start with, uh, with the principles of enterprise architecture, and that's a uh, first step. And is to check that if your organization have kind of enterprise architecture. If they have, you have problems. If they don't have, you have problems. Because if they don't have, <laughs> if, if they don't have enterprise architecture, I see that people don't understand what you are talking about. And if they have, they have to change it because you like to put the enterprise GIS inside of uh, your organization's enterprise architecture. Now it's better. <laughs> Maybe that there was uh, some kind of conspiracy from the Microsoft to me. Okay, <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Okay, uh, and sometimes GIS people should show the path. And it's not the first time I've seen that, okay, some kind of new ICT coming to the organizations and the GIS people are the first to do it. So be aware about that. 
So enterprise architect architecture, a very complex uh, concept to cover in this presentation. Uh, my feeling or my idea is that it's not really that technology tool. It's a, like a discussion uh, to uh, between business owners and the IP people. And you document the documentation to also putting the ideas and uh, things to the, in the, not in the paper, sometimes yes, but not usually in the paper. Uh, there is this Archimate open source software that you can use to collect the information and store it. And there's uh, also a good book and you can read it and understand how to do it. Uh, where to start the enterprise GIS, then I usually say that, okay, the current processes you have to describe. Organizations are running the processes, do they know or not? Uh, maybe they, they have a description of the processes. That's not the truth that they don't follow those processes, but uh, you have to do it. The main thing is, in my opinion, is to find the owners of the processes actors in the process, that they know who is who is responsible about the processes. So after the describes in the processes, you, you think about that are they good enough and, and, and does our current uh, GIS system fulfill the needs on those. Who will describe the processes? And I, as a GIS consultant, I'm of course saying that somebody outside. You can do it by yourself inside of organization, but you probably have uh, some strengths and weaknesses on that. People usually think that you should know this. We are doing this is our process. Why you are asking uh, stupid questions and so on? So outside consult can make stupid questions and and, and and maybe give some new ideas for those that thing. But still, consultant is a good one hand, but not the master. I have seen that also, and that's terrible things that outside consultants try to run a company or processes. Uh, um, I like to have concentrate about the data, data architecture in the project, and like kind of database like. So you have to define the conceptual, logical, and, and physical data models. But one key issue in the area of the GIS is that. You have to concentrate also those outside data uh, sets what, which you are going to use. I haven't seen any GIS uh, system without uh, external data sets, at least baseline. But you have all this on those. So you have to concentrate on those. So think about that there's two things, your own data sets and then the outside data sets. Application server architecture, uh, usually there is a uh, map APIs, WMS, WMTS, and they have APIs, whatever you want to have, some geoprocessing services, web maps, and you want to describe your internal services to implement. But then also think about that if you are using the outside services, how long you can stay in business when something goes bad. Usually it's a, a, we have customers who can live hours or days without outside services and uh, that's quite typical, but in some cases those are in minutes or in seconds they have to have. User interface layer is uh, it's some kind of that the end user and his or her boss see that. But nobody is really interesting about that. And if that works, everything goes well. But if it doesn't work, then the whole system is crap. So then you have like all the background things what you have done, or databases and services that are irrelevant if the user interface is not work. If you have all the one kind of user interface, sorry, you don't have an enterprise GIS. So if you have a test of users, that's it. You can wait. <laughs> the fast lane for enterprise GIS, describe those processes, design data layer, design application server layer, think about the design, designing the user interface, 
and then iterate two, three times to better understand what is needed. Because if you have, don't have a data set, you can't really make a user interface. If you need some data to the user interface, you have to go to the data layer and create that, maybe a new things and so on. So, for 4G software, I'm 36 seconds behind my schedule. Uh, free and open source software for geospatial. Wide definition is like any GI software with open source license. I don't, if you want to ask more about open source licenses, let's talk later on because it's quite a big, wide area to cover. OSGEO, uh, Open Source Geospatial Foundation, uh, has growth grant incubation process to, to show that those open source projects are good enough for your production uses. Choosing software is always tricky task. If that's a matter if it's commercial or open source software, you have to le learn, test, and analyze in your own environment and in your own processes. Uh, key part is also to communicate locally, if you are working here in Latvia, in the Latvian user community, but also in your business or industry. So if you are an electric utility company organization, you have to talk with other electric utility companies, how they do and so on. People have proof of concept uh, system as soon as possible if you want to really test it. So open source GI stack, one of the easiest things is pick up the good GI server and post GI and start the implementation, but there's plenty of other softwares. Which one is the best for you? That's a, that's always a chance to say. Uh, I yesterday in Cyber House uh, Cyber House, I I left already before 10, so I'm pretty okay. Uh, we have a discussion that somebody has implemented Map Server in 2006 or 7, still running the same system that didn't make any bug fixes or version upgrades even. Well, that's what doable. <laughs> Enterprise GI is in the Fosfor G, so it's empty, okay. These drive processes, and this is not technology either. You can do it without putting an any penny on the, on the software. Design the data model for your own data. All the physical data model is technology dependent. Uh, <coughs> Post-GI is your database selection. Sorry, if you go to Post-4G, Postgres or Post-GI is nothing else. And then choose software for the, for the other layers. Conceptual data model, basic information, define the terminology, work with the domain experts. What you actually need when you say what airport? Who knows without reading what is airport? Okay, nobody? Good. Uh, but, but it was, oh, there's a lot to chew. I think. Okay, now you read it. That's it. Okay, but describing what those are. Uh, you select the tool. Logical data model, more information on the conceptual model, uh, some kind information about data types and relations, you can use Archimate for this, and, and then finally go to the physical data model. And in this phase, you, you are like, if you make a physical data model for PostgreSQL well, or PostGIS, you can work that on the world and vice versa. So that, this is the first time when you actually select the technology. PG Modeler is my uh, choice for the, for the physical data model. Application server selection, what is your idea? Are you running Windows? Sorry about that, <laughs> Windows. Uh, On-premises or cloud, are you going to implement uh, APIs only, web mapping, uh, web GIS capabilities, web viewing services, editing geospatial information, dashboards, who need the dashboard? Nobody raising the hand. That's the right thing. Managers are not here, but managers pay the salaries and the bills, so we have to build the dashboard. Uh, desktop application. 
Okay, in Windows, iOS, Linux, what is your choice? Sorry about if you are using Arch Linux, you don't have a life. <laughs> <laughs> what features are needed? Editing uh, ICC environment? Uh, do, does your users already know some GS desktop? Because that's a relevant thinking about the training and so on. Mobile applications. Are you just viewing the data or just making some editing data in the field or are you making data collection in the field? Those are different things. So if you just edit the attributes or you make the data collection, that's totally different. If you go to the OSM street mapping, you can see that it's very difficult to make the editing on the field. Uh, well, mobile network coverage is one of the key issues. It works perfectly here, 4G, 5G, whatever you want. But if you go to the forest, you don't have a coverage. Not even, not even in the field. What is mobile land or whatever. Some post 4G architectures from our use cases. This is like a small municipality. You have a data storage layer, and then you have raster data files in the imagery and raster maps in the files, vector data in PostGIS. In application server layer, we have GeoServer for APIs and MapStore uh, for the web mapping. And you see that there's two kind of users like regular municipality worker for the web map, and then the GIS analyst, the, the Google GIS. Uh, for editing and analyzing the information. Uh, one other municipality like to expand for the mobile uh, data collection, but also have external services for their uh, inhabitants in the municipality and also the other uh, agencies working in their area. In this case, uh, there was a copy of the, or regular copy of the selected uh, data set uh, data sets to the outside uh, <coughs> server, and then we make a total different uh, kind of isolated uh, environment for those external users. And there's also the separation of, this is also about the data security and cyber security issue, because depending how isolated system, you can uh, uh, limit it, what information you're actually put on online, and also that uh, if there will be some kind of cyber attack, your internal system is not uh, uh, hindered by those uh, malicious attackers. Uh, then one other from the real company environment. So we make a data that you can see that there's a lot of web services in the data layer and application server layer. We make some kind of data integration from data warehouses to Amazon RDS and then running containers with the Napster and Geo server and so on. And using uh, with API or via API uh, different kind of other systems. So, slide almost. Uh, one takeout. So when you press GIS with post 4 g that's a well, solution for all sides of organization. Uh, post 4G or open source software is not free, as a free beer. It's a freedom of action. So you can actually make your own choices about how you use software, how to share software. You can avoid vendor locker, vendor lock. Uh, uh, it's possible to be also in the vendor of the open source software. I don't give you any examples, but that's, that's possible. But you can select by whom or who will provide the other services like training, consultation, development. You can have an uh, idea of what is the cost management for this year, for next year, or after uh, your. ELA or EA agreement will finish. Remember that code is law. If you don't know what I mean about that, Google. Uh, it's very important to understand that everything goes in the source code. Join the Fosfoji community. It's open to everybody who accepts the uh, uh, open source uh, license. 
licenses and the idea, have fun, any questions? So we do have several questions from the audience. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about your experience in Enterprise GIS in closed or disconnected environments? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. okay. Yes, I have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's safe to be here as a NATO country. I was a uh, NATO in Sweden and it was a little bit scary to be a non NATO country. <laughs> but if I go in details on this post disconnected environment, probably have to have a not open room. Okay. Um, are you distributing some software created by your company from municipalities, for example? Do you actually distribute the software? Uh, yes. Uh, in our company, quite often, when we make a solution for customer, we publish the code also in the GitHub. But it's dependent on the customer if they like to have. So quite many municipalities in Finland like that we put the dirt on the, on the GitHub. Uh, I would say that some early Projects were uh, encrypted, so all the documentation is in Finnish. And I think you are not quite in Finnish, so it's maybe a difficult to understand. It's, it, well, the rest of it, they understand. But, uh, but basically, yes, we try to publish. Uh, we know that you have uh, been a proprietary software fan and moved to open source. Do you know of any organizations that have moved in the opposite direction? Mm. From open source to proprietary. Well, there's a, a mixed use in this uh, open source uh, commercial software uh, area is very good. There's other area in the life where mixed use is not recommended, I would say. But uh, in this case, it's quite often our customers are using both uh, 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 proprietary software and open software. Uh, I haven't seen anybody who just did choose the open source software and then say, okay, it doesn't do this thing. Uh, one question that's not on the screen, you mentioned conceptual, logical, and physical data models. What are your clients doing with regard to maintaining the links between those? Is this a throwaway effort, or do they actually maintain three levels of data models? Uh, yeah. In theory, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know that. In practice, uh, it, it's quite a long uh, period of time, and they, I think they rewrite it in some way in, in the conceptual model when the business is changing. But they are not doing like a uh, daily or monthly or quarterly, but not even in yearly basis. I think it takes about several years that they then go to there. Okay. Um, we have some more questions coming in, or although our time is running out. Uh, did you jump to the second, the first question? As users of open source, how would you say you give back to the community as a consulting company? Yes, well, we donate the money to the open source uh, software project, but we are also giving a more uh, important thing like time, so our people have a uh, right, I will say, to use 5% of their time. Uh, uh, for the open source projects. It might be a coding or documentation or helping people on the mailing list, but we have this full of what it is uh, And finally, um, as you've uh, probably helped clients move from proprietary yeah. to open source, what have been the main obstacles that your clients have encountered? Maybe the misunderstanding how much time it will take at the end. I mean, and it's not time like uh, consulting resources, it's like calendar time. So, so it, it, it's, if you realize that, okay, let's start today, the moving the whole organization, it will take several months to better communicate to the people what we are going to do and so on. So it's like calendar time. And a misunderstanding is that we can push this calendar time like shorter to get more people involved and then it leads to uh, very difficult questions. So I, I said a pain of calendar time. It, it 
my thick years. Let's thank Becca for a wonderfully broad view on implementing.